Alright guys and welcome back to the Saints View, the channel for something content for our match preview and predicted lineup ahead of the big one. It is Bournemouth away in the FA Cup quarter final. For me, the biggest game of the season so far. Absolutely must win. And yeah, I've been looking forward to it for a, for a month now. It's been the only game I've kind of really been excited for. But before we get into it, do make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet already. Follow us on all of our socials. And as always, this video is kindly sponsored by the guys over at Pitchsport. Make sure you've downloaded that app if you haven't yet already. Right, let's get into it. Now, before we talk about Bournemouth, let's reflect on the last game as always. 2-1 defeat to Brighton. Shambolic performance in the second half. Got completely outdone by a tactical switch by Graham Potter at the at half time. And I can't even sit here and say I was surprised by it. I wasn't. The way we've played over this awful run since the turn of the year. These sorts of results happen. But I have to say that second half performance was one of the worst I've seen during this run. Um, arguably worse than Leeds. I know we only conceded one goal. But the lack of ambition to go and score. You know, we, they, they scored relatively early in the half. But we never looked like we were going to go and equalise or even go in and get a winner. Yeah, it, it was an absolute shambles. And again, questions have to be asked from the manager, from the players. Um, it's it, it's a real concern now. We're 14th in the league. We're not far off the relegation zone. Six or seven points. Again, two. I would say two wins would, um, would sort us out in terms of safety. And we have got a favourable run coming after the international break to close the season with. But again, it shouldn't be what we're what we're sort of amb what we're aiming for you know relegate or surviving relegation i'd to say shouldn't have been the target you know we were so much higher up the table but you know i guess it's we're at a point now where you can't really you can't really get frustrated with it we, we've got to accept that you know nowhere are we gonna get a european place probably won't get a top half finish at all we're for the final nine or ten games we're going to have to make sure we avoid relegation and it's all well and good saying we've got a handful of winnable fixtures coming up we've had a load of winnable fixtures recently and we've only won one of them and that was Sheffield United you know so I, I don't even think that's an excuse anymore we have to show up in these games but I have to say the FA Cup game has come at a very good time it's a welcome distraction it's our last game before an international break our next game is uh, not until the 3rd of April 4th of April against Burnley so it's, yeah, it's very welcome. And in the FA Cup this season, I think we've put in some of our best performances. The Shrewsbury game, okay, we saw a lot of rotation um, and we, we got the job done. That was all it was about. Um, but I have to say against Wolves and Arsenal, or I should say Arsenal Wolves, shouldn't I? Um, when we play strong teams, obviously the opposition rotated a bit. We we played some of our best stuff, I felt. And um, yeah, going into this game, haven't conceded a goal in the competition yet. The quarterfinals are big big stage you know it's um it's not something that happens that often obviously I know we only got there three years ago the last time went to the semi-final that year um but playing at Wembley is a massive deal for this football club you know regardless of whether there's going to be fans or not regardless of who we're playing regardless of how you know the league campaign's gone it, it is a big deal and regardless of the fact that we're playing a championship side in Bournemouth we have to go and win it is because it's you know it's a big deal it's a it's a really big occasion and with no disrespect to Bournemouth, I I do feel like I speak for the rest of the fan base in the sense that we were very pleased with the draw. Um, in the sense that not, it's not got anything to do with geography and a rivalry. If we're still trying to force a rivalry, we're we're not. If they're trying to still force a rivalry with us, um, it's more about the fact that we got the most winnable team uh, on paper. You know, we avoided the likes of Chelsea, Man City, Everton, uh, Man United are in there too. So, yeah, we, we've been favoured with the draw, but that means nothing unless we go and win the game. And they've got good players. They've been on a slump in the Championship recently, but they've still got Premier League quality players. Solanke's proven himself down in the Championship. Dan Joom has caught my eye a bit. Um, they've got Jack Wilshire back, who's been playing well. Now, there are players that are going to give us a good game. And, yeah, I don't think it's fair to think that um, we, we're going to run away with it and win 3-4-0. I think it's going to be a really tight one. But of course, I'm no expert on Bournemouth, so I've got Oli May to come back on the channel to talk about Bournemouth, how their season's gone and how he's feeling ahead of the game. Right then, guys, on to the opposition preview part of the video. I'm delighted to say that Oli is back on the channel to preview this weekend's massive game in the FA Cup. For us, I'd say it's our biggest game, but mate, first of all, how are you doing? I forgot to even ask you that. But first of all, how are you doing and how do you see this game on the uh, on the weekend? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Uh, cheers for having me back on. Um, oh, wow, nervous. Uh, I mean, it is pretty much one of our biggest games of the season. The thing is, we were at the top of the championship for so long and then suddenly out of nothing, we sort of hit a horrible patch of form that just didn't turn around. 
Um, and we're now obviously out of the playoff places. So you could argue there are bigger games to be played in the championship to try and get ourselves back up at the Premier League level. But wow, I mean, FA Cup quarter final, first time in 64 years. Not going to be an easy game, and I'm very nervous for it. Do you think Jonathan Woodgate is going to prioritise the FA Cup? Obviously, you mentioned how you've slipped out of the uh, the playoffs, but it's not impossible to get yourselves back in there before the end of the season and give yourselves another shot at promotion. Do you think the FA Cup is a priority, or do you think there might be a bit of rotation and his focus will, uh, will be solely on the uh, the championship and the task at hand of promotion? Um, I think it's a difficult one. I think you know he's only sort of had six games in permanent charge. Um, it's been a weird sort of run in those six games. We won three, lost three, um, or won three, I think drawn one and lost two. But, you know, half of the games he's played, uh, he's managed so far, he, he's won. But they haven't really been convincing, uh, although we have beaten some big sides. For, you know, against Swansea um, on Tuesday night. We also, of course, beat Bristol City. And, you know, th those are big teams around us. So I, I can't see him completely disregarding this uh, quarter final because... There is a chance to get to Wembley, you know, to get into the last uh, uh, four uh, of the uh, FA Cup, you know, which is obviously a huge uh, task at, for any club, let alone a, a club of AFC Bournemouth size. You know, they haven't got the biggest club, they haven't got the biggest, um, you know, roster of players to, to choose from. So I, I can't really see him completely ditching the, the, the game and saying, oh, it's a free hit, you know, play the reserves or play players that aren't really in his main focus. But at the same time, I can't really see him saying, you know, everybody go out. This is the one game of the season that we really care about because there is still a massive journey um, to fulfil in our league campaign. Who are the key players, do you think, going into the weekend? Obviously, assuming that they play because, obviously, for, I think some Saints fans might not have been watching the Championship as much. And is it, it seems like it's a little bit of a case of same players from the Premier League, but then a sprinkle of, sort of new faces. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, we still got the uh, the depth of the, the squad that we had in the in the champ uh, in the uh, Premier League last season. Except, you know, we, we've got a lot more players back fit now. Of course, when we were relegated last season, we had at some points literally uh, 11, 12 players, first team players to pick from. Um, so this season, we've got a lot more players back that perhaps weren't involved as much last season. Uh, and of course, we have lost key players as well: Joshua King, Callum Wilson, Nathan Ake, all all leaving. Aaron Ramsdale as well, all leaving in the summer. But it's pretty much the same AFC Bournemouth squad uh, as last season. You know, we've still got David Brooks involved. Uh, the midfield is very similar. Um, of course, Dan Gosling's left to, uh, to Watford. But, you know, Lewis Cook, you know, is still a very good player. He's actually out injured. He's just uh, done his ACL, so he won't be involved. But it's still a very Premier League-worthy team, I would say. So on paper, although, of course, we're a league um, below Southampton, on paper, I can't see the teams being uh, too un unfairly matched. It's not going to be a, a sort of David versus Goliath FA Cup game, of course, which you wouldn't really expect, of course, in the, in the fourth finals. But it's not going to be a big uh, gap that some people may see uh, when they see, oh, ch Championship, Premier League. Um, I mean, you know, you mentioned some new faces there. You know, we've got uh, Rodrigo Raquelme on loan from Atletico Madrid. He hasn't really hit the heights this season. Uh, but another player joining us is Jack Wilshere, and he has absolutely hit all expectations that AFC Bournemouth fans and football fans would have seen uh, and expected of him as he joined Bournemouth for a second time. Of course, he's won the FA Cup for, um, uh, on two occasions. Uh, he's been involved um, in many uh, uh, important games with Arsenal. Um, his final uh, two appearances in the FA Cup before he played for Bournemouth this season was actually in the FA Cup final um, the season before and the season before last. It was... It, it, it was Quite incredible stat there that you know his last two appearances were in FA Cup finals. Of course, I mean not the season that the season before last season's final, of course. Um, so it's quite an incredible stat, and you know that shows the, the quality that he's he's got, and he moves into the team this season, and he's been fantastic. You know, we got the opening goal in our, in our previous win against uh, Crawley in the FA Cup. I believe that was the fourth round. So you know, it, it's not going to be an easy game for either side, but I can definitely see Jack Wilshere being one of them key players for AFC Bournemouth if he uh, he hits his heights that we know he can reach. I can't have you on the channel and not mention the fact that obviously we've got Shane Long over at Bournemouth on loan from Saints. He will be cup tied for this one, but what have you made of his couple of months at uh, the Vitality so far? Because I'm sure Saints fans would be interested to know. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's been a bit patchy, if I'm totally honest. Uh, I think he's got two goals um, for us, uh, I believe, as of now. It might be three goals, but it's two or three. It's certainly not. Uh, big numbers as of yet. I believe the, the first two goals that he got for us anyway were consolation goals. I think we lost the games that he scored in anyway. They were pretty much 2-0 uh, 
uh, down, sort of get a goal back and still end up losing 2-1. So he's not really been involved too much um, in terms of the goals perspective. He's not really had a, a tint on any performances as of yet in terms of an out-and-out -out sort of goal scorer that uh, obviously Saints fans will know that he can uh, be and has been through, through the years. And he's not sort of hitting the... Uh, the heights that are, I think I said that about five times now, but I think he's not sort of hitting the expectations that you would expect from Shane Long because we know, you know, through the years he scored goals um, effortlessly at times, um, and I think that's something that AFC Bournemouth lacked last season and have lacked this season. You know, Dom Talanke's been uh, brilliant this season, but he has had injury problems, which of course is a problem. Um, you know, we've got Sam Sarich, who's still quite young, still had uh, you know difficulties getting into the Bournemouth team, and this is his first real season that's. He sort of got into the side, having been on loan for a couple of seasons. So it is not really ideal that we haven't got a striker that we can rely on goal uh, for goals week in, week out. And I think Shane Long would be expected to sort of be one of them players that you can start and know that they're going to play 100% and give you a good attacking threat. But at the moment, it just hasn't clicked. And then just to wrap up, mate, how are you feeling ahead of the game? And can I push you for a score prediction? Oh, the score prediction. I knew it would, I knew it would arrive. Um, I couldn't tell you that the score prediction, in terms of how I'm feeling, I'm obviously very, very anxious and excited at the same time. You know, it's the first time in my lifetime I've seen AFC Bournemouth put an actual cup run together. I can't lie, every year when the FA Cup begins, you know, I watch it for the for the fairy tale stories, the, the clubs that go on these crazy runs, you know, the, the Chorleys and, um, you know, the Marines of this year, for example. And, AFC Bournemouth have never been one of them sides. We always get into the third round or fourth round, depending obviously where we are, and we end up sort of losing uh, one of them ties against you know a lower league side and uh, usually a league one or league two side at, at that. So you know I've never really had an FA Cup run um, in my lifetime. I've been obviously uh, fortunate enough to see AFC Bournemouth reach the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup a couple of times, you know against Liverpool and Chelsea through the years. So it's nice to have an FA Cup quarterfinal. Uh, weekend to look forward to where AFC Bournemouth are part of it and obviously the first time in 64 years I can't express how excited I am for the game but also very very nervous um, you know I'm going to be watching the game live uh, on, on my channel with, with some Bournemouth fans and you know I, I've been speaking to them this week and they're just as nervous as I, as I am and you know to be able to like I say be involved in an FA Cup quarter final game uh, with your club it is obviously something that as a Bournemouth fan we weren't experienced for a long time to come, I don't think. Um, and I wasn't expecting to, to, to happen this, this week. So, you know, this is something that it, it is in terms of free hit that I've heard AFC Wilma fans uh, saying, you know, go out, express yourself and enjoy the occasion, but also make sure you give a full uh, 90 minutes of everything you've got. And, I, you know, I, I can agree with that, but I can't explain how nervous I am, but like I say, excited as well to see it happen. And uh, in terms of a score prediction, like I say, I, I can't even predict it. Uh, it it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a close game. Like I said before, two very even squads. I know, uh, of course, we're in different leagues, but if you look at our form, you know, it, it, they've, they've been sort of uh, somewhat consistent between us, um, which is incredible because we've had such inconsistencies in our form, but consistency uh, between the two teams in terms of their recent league form and things. So, you know, two teams that haven't really hit the heights that they perhaps should have been this season. Uh, but nevertheless, two, two sides that um, will be battling for a place in the last four of the FA Cup. And like we say, one of them will be there. Um, but I do think it's going to go all the way to, uh, to extra time and penalties. I'm going to say one all uh, over 90 minutes. I think it's going to go to Pens. Who, who could win it? It's a lottery. Who knows? But uh, I, I, can, I can only hope that at the end of it, at about half past two on Saturday afternoon, I will be absolutely buzzing. But hopefully, it'll be a good game nonetheless. Tom, man, for coming on, mate. Thanks for everything. Uh, just to wrap up, where can everyone find you? Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, Oli May YouTube. Uh, that's my uh, my name on my on my YouTube. It's just my full name on my Twitch as well, on Facebook and, and Twitter and things like that. Just Oli May or uh, Oli May Football. Uh, if uh, you're looking for Twitter and Instagram. Thanks a lot for doing that, mate. Of course, his link is in the description below. If you want to go give him a sub, it'll be massively appreciated. Right. Onto the predicted lineup for me, absolutely no argument in the sense that it has to be a strong side. It has to be probably as strong as possible. I do think there could be the odd tweak, um, and we'll go into that now. Uh, but overall, it's got to be a strong side. Starting in goal, I think Fraser Force is going to keep his place there. It could be cause for Alex McCarthy to come in. Obviously, he hasn't played that much in the league recently, just the Man City game. But 
I don't see what good it would do um, changing the goalkeeper again. When we got to the quarter, uh, semi-final, I should say, uh, three years ago, Alex McCarthy had been or had just come in as the uh, the lead keeper and kept his place. You know, it wasn't a case of Fraser Forster came in for the cup game. Then, like, they're not rotating cup um, and lead keepers. I think it's going to be Fraser Forster, or it should be Fraser Forster, in my opinion, anyway. Back four, I think it's going to look uh, slightly different to the Brighton game. I think we can have Burchand and Walker Peters as the fullbacks. But I think we might see um, Salisu come in for bed rest. I think Vestergaard may be next to him. I think Salisu had a poor game against Man City. Obviously, that was at left back. Uh, I think in his central position in the defence, he's been decent. Had a good game against Chelsea. Had a great game in the uh, game against Wolves in the Cup. I'd like to see him in there. And I think um, if Ralph's going to make any sort of change, it might be in that area. Then in the midfield, as usual, I think it's be Wal Prowse and Diallo. No question marks there. On the right, Stuart Armstrong. And then on the left, I think it's going to be Gineppo. Of course, Minamino is cup tied for this one, having played for Liverpool in the competition earlier this season. And then up front, I think it's going to be Nathan Teller and Shea Adams. Teller might be rotated for uh, for Redmond. I don't know. But I definitely think Adams needs to be in there. And very quickly, he's put himself <laughs> as one of the... Um, as one of the first names in the team sheet with three goals in his last three games. He's the man in form and he's probably the man that we're going to be looking for for goals. Obviously, Ings is missing this one. And for me, this is it's a really strange feeling, but I don't feel like we're missing Ings that much. Um, in the sense that Adams has been scoring. Ings hasn't been playing well at all, really, since this whole run or during this whole run, I should say. It's not as big a miss as I think some pundits might make out. I, I do feel like Adams can be the man to lead the line. Whether it's Teller or Redmond next to him, I don't think it really matters that much. But yeah, that's the team I think is going to play. And again, it's a strong side. Then to wrap up for a score prediction, I do think we're going to win the game. I don't think it's going to be comfortable at times. I think it's going to be nervous. But I think it's going to be a bit like the game we played at the Vitality back in July towards the end of last season in the Premier League. And I think we're going to come away with a 2-0 win. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have enjoyed it, leave it a like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts ahead of the game. Who would you play? What's your score prediction? Follow us on our socials if you haven't yet already. And we'll see you after the game for our match review, hopefully after big three points. Take it easy, guys.